Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Professor Swigert, uh, Dean Maggot, fellow panelists, and guests and students here at Brandeis. Thank you very much for having me today. Uh, I represent the Cambridge Institute for Brazilian Studies. And as Dean Maggie said, I've been a long time student researcher of Brazil and continue to do so. I'm going to focus my brief remarks today mainly on the societal aspects of the first question that Professor Swigart posed to us, the panelists. Namely, how can the Brazilian government best balance the need to expand the economy with the responsibility to preserve the environment and protect the rights of indigenous populations? I'm going to present two lines of analysis. First, on the concept of development itself. Second, on what the government might do to reconcile the potentially conflicting interests mentioned. And finally, I'll conclude with a comment on how the demarcation of indigenous lands that's been occurring over the last 10, 15 years or so is unexpectedly good for the environmental agenda. So first, on the concept of development. Development, as many of you know, is an inescapable double-edged sword. A universally and often uncritically revered aspiration of all countries. Brazil being an important enthusiast for the idea since it captured the world's imagination in the post-World War II Bretton Woods era. No doubt important gains come from development. Improvements in health, education, opportunities for business, infrastructure building, national integration, capital formation, prestige and frankly power for countries engaged in the development process. Almost a religious quest for modernity and modernization is development's twin. Brazil's made gigantic strides in this direction on both fronts. However, the modernization and development are wrenching processes around the world, not just in Brazil dislocations, often violent conflicts over resources and fruits and the fruits of development, and a poor government record of compensation for those that lose houses, land, and or livelihoods sacrificed for the public goods of national development and modernization. Losers in the development process are typically society's weakest political actors. In Brazil, the urban and rural workers, and here in the Americas, People of African and indigenous descent are among these. Although Brazil's indigenous population is relatively small, about 817,000 uh, people consider themselves indigenous out of 197 million people, the population of Brazil, 500 of these indigenous people living in Brazil's rural areas. Indians are symbolically important and suffer disproportionately from developmentalism because their lands are typically located in important agribusiness, mining, timber extraction, or hydroelectric zones, all central to the Brazilian contemporary export economy. Rural and urban workers are, of course, the majority of Brazil's population. The recent Bolsa Família family grant initiatives, transfer payments of the Fernando de Cardoso, Lula, and Dilma presidential administrations have made significant strides to redress the country's historic social imbalances, along with efforts to demarcate and secure indigenous territories. However, Brazil still remains one of the most unequal countries in the world, and the agenda for change needs much attention, particularly since Brazil is among the world's largest of the world's unequal countries. Second point I wanted to briefly touch on in my remarks. What can the government do to expand the economy and redress further these development imbalances? Moving from developmentalism to true development. Working together for many years with my colleagues on development projects has taught us that the following four initiatives are the keys to answering this question. But they're neither easy to implement, <clears throat> nor, I'm sorry to say, even probable, given the present configuration of power holders in Brazil. Firstly, governments need to find ways to listen better to the population. What can they tell us are their priorities for development? They often know very well. Second, governments need to find ways to include the population in development planning. 
how can their priorities be in the plans to be implemented? Straightforward, often not straightforward to do. Third, in Brazil, the government needs to find ways to build on the Workers' Party own par its own participatory budgeting initiatives. After all, the budget is the key governmental political document, as we see here uh, in the United States. Right now, we talk about the budget all the time. And the Brazilian Workers' Party has spearheaded, in some notable areas, an effort to democratize the budget's creation. And fourth and finally, continue with the Brazilian government's remarkable public welfare successes. The Brazilian government has been able to stem the spread, for example, of HIV uh, infections uh, through government initiatives, rather notable. Uh, uh, the government, in short, needs to exercise enlightened leadership for the public good. Although these ideas may well be criticized for being utopian and unrealistic, they have, in part, as I mentioned, already occurred in Brazil. And they really are aimed at a most critical aspect of contemporary Brazilian life, the effort to make it more democratic and participatory. Such a political process would have had have a direct impact on the character of Brazil's development. Following over 25 years of asking indigenous people, rural workers, favela inhabitants, women's group leaders, fishermen, unionists, students, professors, businessmen, and politicians, about their thoughts for improving Brazil's democracy, I found a remarkable consensus that taking these related paths would not only help Brazil's democracy to deepen, but would bring it closer to the, the goal of true development, not developmentalism. It's a long road, but Brazilians themselves have a pretty clear map of it. Now it's a question of balancing democratically Brazil's political interests. Finally, I wanted to share with you a datum of importance that I'd like to conclude with. And that is, since the government has succeeded in demarcating considerable tracts of indigenous lands, indigenous territories in the most, quote, developed areas of rural Brazil, for example, in the Cerrado region of the Central Highlands, and the southeastern Amazonian states of Pará and Mato Grosso, indigenous peoples now control legally the largest remaining territories with relatively intact original biomes. They control lands that are not developed. Though they are surrounded often by agribusinesses that either covet or pollute their water resources, not to mention invading illegally the land itself, the Indians, ostensibly at least, control the largest amounts of untouched biome in developed rural Brazil all the more reason to find ways to listen to them systematically, as well as their neighbors doing business around them, in order to, to protect the Indians, the environment, and to safeguard legitimate law-abiding business enterprises, thereby continuing the positive sides of contemporary rural development. For me, the fundamental question facing us really is not if development, but how. Nobody's seriously arguing that Brazil will cease to promote the development of its valuable natural resources in rural areas to safeguard minority interests. This may not even be the minority's own interests. They may want to have development. Uh, one would need to ask them to find out. Yet if we include the stakeholders in the development process, if we listen to them, if we make a serious effort to sit down and reconcile the interests involved, environmental, indigenous, and business, we're far more likely to gain buy-in from all the stakeholders. There really is no longer any reason for one group to overrun any other. Thank you.